Hi guys, and welcome to today's Same Rush webinar. And today I am joined by Gautam Shewa Kramani. Hopefully that is as close to your name as I can possibly get. <laughs> so the pronunciation I have practiced, but welcome to today's webinar. Um, another guest who's going to be speaking in India on the 5th of December. So welcome today. Do you want to um, give the audience just a bit of a background as to what you do, where you work, um, and a bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. Um, glad to be here. Um, my name is Gautam, as Craig mentioned. Um, I, I work at Quora. Um, primarily focused on, I'm on the product team, primarily focused on our growth uh, in India. Um, uh, based based sort of in and out of the country, I travel a lot. Uh, I do consider India home though. Um, and uh, yeah, before before joining Quora, I was at, I used to run my own tech, uh, consumer tech startup called Audio Compass. We used to do uh, audio guides for tourists um, that did well, but not as well as I would have liked. Um, yeah, and before that, I was doing all kinds of things. I was in the hospitality business and in business school and in management consulting. So I've done a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm going to dive straight into the slides that I have, and I want to make sure that I leave a lot of time for Q&A um, at the end. So, yeah, I'm just going to try to share my screen. Um, here we go. One second. Um, all right, let me project and figure out how to share my screen. There we go. All right, can everyone see? Yes, all good. Perfect. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to very quickly um, dive into Quora um, and what it is and, and why people come to Quora. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a growth, some growth strategies that that businesses and individuals can employ to uh, to be successful on Quora. Uh, I'm going to focus primarily on uh, getting started on the platform um, and the approach to take there, and and I'm going to end with talking a little bit about uh, how you can accelerate that. And that's really what my talk at the conference is going to be all about, um, on the 5th of December. Um, and obviously, like I said, we'll have some time for Q and A, hopefully a lot of it, you know, we, we love questions. Um, so you know, really quickly diving in, um, you know, what Quora, what, what is Quora? Um, so, a a vast majority of, of knowledge is still not on the internet. Um, uh, most of it is, trapped in the form of experience um, in people's heads, buried in books, in in papers, journals, uh, newspapers that only experts can access. Um, so as a result, most people don't have the knowledge that they should and don't have the time, connections, or skill to get the knowledge that they would need to have in an ideal world. And knowledge is, is extremely important. It, it's actually upstream to decision making. Um, so it's an extremely important uh, and a critical piece of of uh, human progress. Um, and you know, like I said, knowledge knowledge changes lives. And and we've kind of seen uh, the impact that knowledge can have on people. Uh, just you know, looking at some of our our growth as a company at, at, and as a product at Quora. Um, today we have um, over three hundred million monthly active visitors, um, people coming to Quora from all, of, all over the world to learn about the world around them, asking questions, answering them. And this kind of this exchange of knowledge that occurs on Quora is conducive to people who are receptive to, to new solutions as well as discovering new products. And, and that's probably why most of us are on this webinar and that's what I'm gonna kind of dive into a little bit. Uh, a little bit. So, Quora has different use cases, like I mentioned. Obviously, I'm going to focus on on people who are you know looking for solutions and products. Um, but you know, at a, at a high level, people come to Quora for all kinds of reasons, right? Sharing knowledge, stories, um, evaluating products. Um, you know, you can you know look at the stuff on the screen. Um, you know, life life advice, um, 
you know, to form communities. So there's a lot of reasons why people come come to Quora. But one thing that we see, regardless of what your reason is or what a user's reason is to come to Quora, um, we kind of look at ourselves in between sort of social and search, right? So so like kind of switching gears and thinking about thinking about Quora as as a marketer and 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 through the lens of like a marketing stack. Um, you know, Quora is a hybrid of of social and search, right? We sit somewhere in the middle. Um, we're social to the extent that, you know, people come to Quora, you know, people look at, so, you know, use social platforms to browse passively um, and people come to search when they've already decided on something. So, you know, using a, a common example from our lives, you know, uh, let's say, you know, if you're deciding to, to go on a holiday or you're traveling, you know, the social aspect is kind of passively browsing through your friends, Instagram or um, Facebook pictures. Um, search kind of becomes relevant when you're when you've decided you want to find a hotel for example in a specific destination but when you're not 100% sure and you you know you know you want to travel but you haven't made up your mind yet um you know quora is really the place to come and learn and get different points of view and different opinions so because we're so hybrid we have this ability as for marketers to kind of go wide to the top of the funnel as well as down narrow to the bottom of the funnel based on the types of questions people are asking and the types of answers people are are reading and and as as advertisers and marketers we can actually capture um capture people's attention at the time that they express that interest um so really quora is about discovering new things and that's really the key of of the of the platform one thing i didn't mention earlier is that we are a horizontal platform so people are engaged on quora um on a variety of topics um these are some of our are sort of popular topics in India, um, you know, with some with some numbers sort of thrown in. You can see, you know, I talked about travel. I'm going to use travel uh, through this webinar just because it's an easy, relatable topic for for all of us to uh, uh, to kind of understand and, and talk about. Um, so as you can see, like for you know, we've got cricket and Bollywood, science, um, health. So all kinds of kind of topics under the sun, you know, from from scuba diving to uh, to everyday life and, and dating and relationships. Um, so, you know, I guess the first question as marketers we need to ask ourselves is, is my audience on Quora? Um, my answer, I'm obviously a little bit biased is yes. Um, you know, travel is one example, like I, like I talked about just looking at travel alone, this is the, the size of the, uh, of the audience just for for Quora. Just the question, what are the best airport tips has has driven these kind of you know question views. Um, and we've seen this across uh, many of all of our topics um, and in India as well um, as a market. Um, here's kind of what some of our numbers look like in India. Uh, we're at about 70 million uh, monthly unique visitors um, in, in India as of as of uh, about a year ago. Um, and this number is an English only number. We're also available in um, several other languages. We're currently available in four Indian languages and there's another four um, in the pipe that, that you'll hear about very soon. Um, so a little bit more about our audience before I dive into sort of the, the meat of the presentation. Um, here's a, a little bit of a, a look of our demographics uh, and audience base. One thing that I'm very, very proud of um, is our male female split. Uh, we're close to even, which is which is quite unique for uh, digital platforms in India. And I think one of the uh, one of the reasons for that could be the kind of safe uh, environment that we have created online, not just for businesses but for users as well. Um, you know, we have a zero tolerance policy for any type of harassment or uh, you know rudeness. Uh, we have a policy called "be nice, be respectful" that we really enforce. Um, in terms of age. Um, you can see most of the audience is under 34, but a pretty solid uh, group of uh, people visiting Quora above the age of 35 and even as as uh, sort of high as, as 50 plus. Um, in terms of, um, you know, overall engagement on the platform, um, again, another number that I'm, I'm really proud of, um, you know, 40 minutes for our app users. And what's even more interesting is the 15 to 20 minutes uh, per day that our mobile search users use. So this number is basically people who search for 
for something on other platforms on the internet land on Quora through search. So it could be a Google search or a Bing search, um, end up on Quora. And then instead of just reading an answer and bouncing away, they spend 15 to 20 minutes on the platform. So they're not just coming to Quora uh, just to kind of get a quick piece of information and leave, but they're really discovering and learning and and, and using the platform to kind of in, increase the, the amount of knowledge that they have. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna switch gears now um, and and get straight into kind of how you could as a as a marketer or as a business owner um, think about being active on Quora and and think about getting started on Quora. Um, the strategy that that we've come up with and that I really like is I call it the listen, learn, and launch strategy. Um, and and I think being successful on Quora kind of requires all of these three steps. Um, and this kind of happens. So, you know, I, I like this. I like this sort of uh, uh, animation um, because, you know, for those I, I, I call this the cannonball strategy. And this is what you should not do on Quora. So for those who aren't familiar, uh, a cannonball is when you kind of run and, and splash into into a pool and try to make the loudest noise. And too many marketers and, and, and content marketers are you know, are cannonballing into Quora, right? So they're, they're just coming in and diving in. And because they've done this with, with some of the other uh, swimming pools that they've jumped into uh, without really understanding the norms and, and uh, the rules of, of that, that swimming pool. Um, so, you know, here's the, the way kind of I look at it. This is what you should not do. Uh, the right approach to take is a listen, launch, uh, listen, learn and launch approach where, where you really kind of have deep consideration about kind of the approach you want to take. Um, take on the platform. So listen, um, the kinds of questions you want to ask yourself before diving into to Quora, before cannonballing uh, into Quora are what are people saying? Um, uh, you know, what kinds of questions uh, are people asking and who are the writers in these topics that are already doing really well, right? So you don't want to dive in or cannonball into Quora without really understanding your environment. So one thing I like to to kind of talk, tell marketers who are considering Quora as, as an important marketing channel for them is Quora is a marathon and not a sprint. It's not the platform that you sign up for three weeks before the quarter ends so that you can hit your numbers at the end of the quarter. Um, you really want to ask yourself these three questions before you even, uh, before you start actively engaging on the platform. And I'm going to actually show you how you can do these things um, on Quora. Um, before I do that, I want to actually share a little interesting piece of information that I found. Um, this is from a Bain survey that was done, a Bain consulting survey that most of the, the market leaders actually spent a significant amount of time listening to, to conversation, listening to themes, listening to the sentiment of their users before they decide to launch. And that's an, that's something that I want to kind of reiterate that just because a strategy, a social strategy or a marketing strategy works on a different platform doesn't mean that same strategy will work on Quora. You have to understand the norms of the Quora community and the Quora swimming pool, um, using the analogy from earlier, before you, you dive into it. Um, the, the main uh, sort of way you can do that is to understand kind of how to listen on Quora. So one really important thing to, to understand about Quora is that questions on Quora are all about uh, are all about demand. Um, and you want to actually understand the demand that your audience has for content in your specific vertical. Um, this is very different than blogs where you're kind of taking a shot in the dark with a blog post when you pick a topic or an angle that you want to write about on your own company blog or your personal blog. On Quora, we give you enough signal to understand whether there is demand for your topic. Um, so you want to start by searching for keywords related to your business, right? So using the travel example, as you can see on the screen, um, you know, there's, there's lots of, of, uh, uh, questions and content related to travel because Quora is organized into topics and travel is one large topic that I, um, on Quora. And just like that, there are millions of topics on Quora and you want to look at some of the questions that are popular, uh, in your, in your topic. Um, so, you know, like I said, um, using travel as an example, um, 
you want to take a look at the topic followers, right? Large topics are broad, but obviously much more competitive. Smaller top topics are niche. They're much more focused. Um, but there's a, there's a sort of a very high potential for, uh, for reaching the exact audience at the right time that they're interested in something. So you want to find that, that balance between large topics and small topics based on your marketing objectives and marketing needs. Once you do that, the next thing you want to do is you want to filter, filter your search results, um, by not only by topic, but also by author, um, and by time, right? So what kinds of questions is your audience, um, is your audience, um, asking? Um, and you can kind of do that very easily, um, easily on Quora and, and really get a, get a flavor, um, for what is interesting. So, and, you know, on your screen now, we've got, you know, these are the questions that people were asking last week in, in, in the tra in travel, right? So you want to understand what is timely, what is relevant to your audience today, uh, or in the last week or month. Um, and, and get a sense of demand, you know, in terms of how many answers there are, how many questions, how many people are following each question, um, and, and so on. And finally, um, you want to, you know, as part of your sort of listening process and, and, uh, on Quora, you want to actually look at your most successful, uh, you want to look at your most successful, um, writers for each topic. So we've got a feature called most viewed writers. Uh, we've got top writers, uh, which is a badge that we give to our most prolific contributors. You want to look at their approach and their behavior in your topic to see what has, what has worked. Um, you know, how, you know, what kinds of answers are they answering? What kind of tone are they using? How are they being genuine? How are they adding value? So you want to really think about that and, and look at how some of the most successful people, uh, are behaving on the platform before you decide to jump in and start um, engaging on the platform. Um, second step. Um, so like I said, listen, learn and launch. So the next step after you've listened is to learn, right? And, and that's the point where you want to think about things like, um, you know, what kind of value can I add? What kind of answers are doing well? Um, so, you know, sort of diving in and, and, you know, into learning from these students of Quora, right? Uh, looking at top writers, mimicking profiles, um understanding what kind of profiles look good what kind of profiles look very clearly like you know borderline spam salesy you know marketing marketing messages one thing i like to kind of talk about here is that we un as marketers tend to underestimate um people's radar for um for per perceiving uh a message that's clearly a marketing a marketing message and not a genuine message. Um, I think as marketers we tend to forget how easy it is to do that and how easy it is to pick up on that. So it's really important to understand how how to be successful by looking at what some of the most prolific uh, contributors to the platform um, are doing. Um, so I like to use Jason Lemkin as an example. I don't know if you you know he's a he's a VC uh, also happened to f uh, be the founder of a company called EchoSign. That was acquired by Adobe. Um, he's a fantastic example of someone who adds value in his answers. He, um, you know, he, he, he writes answers from personal experience, um, you know, high quality answers. He adds that he truly adds value. And I really encourage you to, to take a look at his profile, uh, and his approach and, uh, to kind of being on Quora, uh, to get a sense of what a successful profile looks like. Um, and, and how to kind of, straddle that line of and, and be on the right side of the line of being a marketer versus being someone who adds value and getting marketing benefit out of that. Um, uh, you also want to look at other high performing answers, um, you know, most viewed writers, uh, top answers. It, it, we, we are very public with our data at Quora in terms of uh, views. So every answer has a number of views. Every question has a number of views and followers. You can actually see that. And get a sense of you know which answers have done really well. And again, here's an example from from the travel topic that that we talked about. Um, and finally, like I said, you know you want to look at you want to look at uh, profiles. Um, you know I'm going to point out a few things. Um, Chris, he has uh, he has a, a profile picture that's important. Um, he's got credentials listed, so clearly explaining to users why he's the right person um, to 
to answer questions on specific topics. Uh, he's active in multiple languages if, if you are able to speak multiple languages. And you can see how successful he's been with his, uh, with the number of answer views that he's had both this month as well as in, in all time. Um, finally, um, you know, what makes a good answer and, and what these top writers do. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the answers that you write are a good length. Um, the, that they're well formatted. Here's, you know, the, the previous slide. It's, it's a very well, easy to read answer. Um, it's, it's a good length. Um, the median answer on Quora actually surprisingly is a hundred words. Um, so you don't have to write an essay every time you write an answer on Quora. You just need to write a good enough length to answer the question, uh, that has been asked. Some answers require short. Some questions require shorter answers and other questions require more detail. So put yourself in the shoes of the question asker and, and think about how you could satisfy them. And finally, we're all marketers and we like to have calls to action and links. Uh, my recommendation is your call to action should exist in your profile, not in each answer. We see this a lot. We see a lot of uh, users putting links, unnecessary links into answers. Um, there's a few problems with that. Firstly, you know, I think a lot of people have this misconception about it helping search and and um, like search optimization. I'm pretty sure the folks at Google are smart enough to figure out that, you know, that the answers have been stuffed with links and probably may even penalize uh, uh, those those links. I, I don't know. Um, secondly, more importantly, the people reading those answers when an answer is stuffed with links, um, it it looks and feels self-promotional and that takes away from the credibility of the content. And, and like I mentioned earlier, credibility is a very important signal at Quora, uh, both for us as a platform, as well as for uh, users who are and people who use Quora. So if you want to add a call to action, add it in the profile. And of course, links sometimes are relevant in answers, but make sure that they are directly providing direct value to the answer, um, to the answer itself. Um, Finally, once you've kind of gone through this, this, you know, step, these two steps of kind of spending time listening, uh, to what's happening on Quora, understanding the, the, the norms of the community, looking at topics and looking at writers that have been successful. That's when you really think about, you know, your business and, and launching on, on Quora, right? So how do you actually, uh, join in on the conversation? How do you write your first answer? Um, I think this is where, um, uh, you know, this is where people tend to, tend to not be as, um, as focused. People who, uh, sort of do the cannonball end up here directly without listening and learning. Um, really you want to think about how can you be helpful to your audience, right? How can you optimize not for a view and not for an upvote, but how can you optimize for a follow, right? So, can a you you know will a user who reads my answer take a step back and say hey this is this individual or this business is really giving me valuable information i want to go and follow that person that's really what we should be optimizing for as marketers not the short term metric of views or likes or upvotes um so i think that's that's really important um so i'm going to kind of give you a few tips on kind of how you can write a good answer and then i want to Quickly recap and 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 then um, you know dive into to Q and A. Um, all right, so like I said, you don't want to be selling on Quora. You want to be adding value. Um, the the people I I kind of the examples I gave you, Jason Lemkin, right? Extremely high value content. The and the value of his content does come back to him. It's just not immediate. Um, and every one of our top writers would say that. So if you look at Jason Lemkin, he's he has a Quora answer about how he was able to raise a, a VC fund on the back of the advice he was giving startup uh, entrepreneurs uh, on Quora. Uh, he uses it as a deal sourcing mechanism um, as a VC. Um, he's now built a community called Sasta uh, on Quora, and there's a space called uh, the Cloud Daily uh, where he basically focuses on SaaS businesses. Um, but all of that has taken him years. I think he was active on Quora before I even joined the company. So like I said, it's a marathon and not, not a sprint. And that's something really to keep in mind, um, for all of you marketers and, and, uh, product managers and founders out there. Um, 
one way of kind of doing that and, and you know providing value and not sort of selling in quotes is to actually create a personal profile we have too many uh you know there's there's a lot of thought required in in terms of when you should answer a question as a business and when you should answer a question as as an individual and really think about what adds the most credibility to the conversation um you know one kind of rule of thumb i like to use is um is that if an answer requires a we answer then a business profile is probably the way to go and and answering the question from the business profile is the way to go so the state bank of india for those of us in india um has a very active presence on quora as a brand um the kinds of questions they answer are things like what are the fees for uh demand drafts on you know at the state bank of india or how do i replace my lost debit card right these are the kinds of answers that are we answers right it, it's more credible for a brand to be answering them than an individual um on the flip side um uh, what is it like to work at facebook what is it like to work at um fresh desk or a fresh or what is it like to work at flipkart right these kinds of questions you could in theory say have someone from the flipkart recruit, recruiting team or the amazon recruiting team um ans- uh, you could have the 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 brand answering these questions but it wouldn't be credible what would be more credible is for perhaps a software engineer who works at one of these companies to talk about their experience working at these companies that's what adds credibility to to our conversation or you know uh, what's the show uh, you know sacred games about or what's the show mirzapur um the tv show mirzapur about that's a, it's a lot more credible coming from an individual as opposed to coming from a brand so really think about personal profiles versus business profiles and and how you want to kind of how you want each one of those to interact with with the platform um here's an example of a of a business profile we have plenty of indian businesses on quora as well like i said the state bank of india uh is one of them um we now are also uh, in a beta program where we uh, we tag business profiles with this uh, verified business badge which adds a little bit of credibility um i'll talk about how you can get one of those badges uh, a little bit later um but yeah so think you know that's the other aspect to to think about um and it's not that businesses can't add value i think businesses can and uh, you know we've seen this in external data as well um uh, people do believe that brands have expertise on topics and and uh oh that and they can add value to content it's really about creating the right kind of of uh content on quora associated with your business versus associated with an individual um so yeah so just to kind of quickly quickly recap um here's a kind of quick checklist for those who decide to kind of answer questions on quora you want to pick a few topics and focus on those you definitely want to answer the question that is asked and not kind of tangentially just kind of push your product uh you want to make sure you provide value and not like make it a a sales pitch really put yourself in the shoes of the question asker um the analogy i like to use is imagine that you're really sitting down with the person who asked the question and answering them one on one you want to format your answer really well um and make it personal right uh you know you can add anecdotes add personal insights that's what jason lemkin has done and he's been very very successful um on that and you want to be very consistent with your approach to doing this over time and 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 it pays dividends uh but it's it like i said it's a marathon and and not a sprint um in terms of like direct business promotion i don't want to spend too much time on that right now we do have an ads product uh you know obviously our audience is very engaged it's high value and the context is correct um you can create a quora ads ads account at quora.com/business and if you want to kind of accelerate the marathon a little bit we do have the option of promoting answers as well so that you can boost distribution of organic content and establish thought leadership this way uh it does provide you a little bit more real estate um but you need to have your building blocks in place before you kind of get into sort of spending money to accelerate uh accelerate the uh you know the the distribution of of the content that you that you create so quick recap before we dive into into questions it's a three step process to be successful on on the platform and grow your business on on quora 
do not cannonball and just dive in spend some time listening look at what people are saying look at the types of questions they are asking and look at who the top writers are in the topics that you or your business care about once you do that spend some time learning about how to be successful on quora look at what the good profiles are doing look at what kind of answers are doing well and look at what kind of value you can add uh, as a business and finally once you've done that you can actually launch uh, your strategy on quora create a profile start writing your answers or create multiple profiles your individual profile as well as your business profile start writing your answers and then promote and then look at once you have that flywheel going then you can and look at promoting your business um using using ads and i'll be talking more about ads at at the conference in on on december 5th so yeah so that's it that's uh, that's sort of a quick summary if people want to take a quick screenshot of this um you know this kind of covers the whole uh the, the whole approach to listen learn and launch um i like to think about quora as kind of sort of like joining a new company on your first day you spend a lot of time on your first day of work listening and learning understanding the culture understanding the norms understanding the past and the present before you kind of start contributing to the company and and that and being on being successful on quora is just like that um that's me um you can reach me by email i'm on twitter and obviously i'm on quora um i'm just going to leave that up there for a quick second and i'm happy to take uh take questions i'm going to stop sharing my screen so that it can be a little more real time thank you Thank you, thank you. Um, before we go into any questions, um, for any of you guys who want to win a free ticket to the conference um, in December, we will have a tweet going up on the Same Rush account anytime now. So Olga will put that up. What we would like you to do is retweet that and reply to it, giving us the best answer or the funniest answer it doesn't have to be the best answer as to why you want to win that free ticket so if you want to get yourself a free ticket go on to twitter and give us a good standout answer we want to select a winner over the next couple of days and as i say we're looking for the best or most most standout answer as to why you might want to attend the conference in December where you'll be able to hear Gotham and a whole bunch of other speakers talking about a wide range of different topics um, and yeah so looking forward to to getting to India now what we're going to do um, just now is go into questions and answers and I will go through as many of the sensible questions as we possibly can in the last um, 20 to 25 minutes that we've got left um so guys put your questions into the youtube chat and i will go through them as quickly as i can with gotham and try and get as many of them answered for you and um, try and keep the questions to quora uh, in general and um, rather than you know if you've got any support issues or whatever then obviously contact quora direct for that but we're trying to get the most amount of value um, from Gotham and his experience and, and everything that goes on behind the scenes with Quora and how we can use it to to benefit us as, as marketeers. Um, so Gotham, excellent presentation. Thanks for the insights. Now I'm just going to start going on with the questions here. Um, the first one we have is um, would there be a good business in answering questions um, on Quora? because I know you guys are doing like paying people to, to answer questions. Someone's asking if that would be a good business model. Uh, so, so just so I understand the question, the question was, would, would it be a good business to pay people to answer questions on Quora? No, would it be a good business to sign up to your program where you guys pay people to answer questions on Quora? So we, we, we currently don't pay people to answer questions on Quora. We do have a program where we pay some people to ask questions on Quora. Oh, that, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. They've wrote so answers. We, in, but yeah. Um, yeah. So we do, we, we, as a, as a company, Quora does have a program. We call it the partner program. We have a program where we pay people to ask questions on Quora. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, we, we've seen that that has driven, uh, a lot of high quality 
questions on the platform and some unfortunately not so high quality questions of the platform which we're we're dealing with um so yeah i mean it's it's a it's a good business for us to kind of have have them do that and but as a as a marketer just so i kind of you know take a step back and really understand the intention of this question as a marketer should you pay people to ask questions about your business on quora um i i don't know if that's the best use of money as a marketer because you can add questions to quora yourself um and um and we don't questions on quora are community property we actually we actually don't make it very obvious in terms of who has asked a question although it's not it's not a secret you can figure out who's asked a question but it's perfectly appropriate to have to to ask a question and then answer it yourself i do that all the time when you have some unique knowledge to share uh, could be about your business could be about your product or could be about a personal experience please go ahead and ask that question and answer it uh, you don't need to pay somebody else to do it for you um so yeah there's hmm. There's a bunch of questions in our chat. Should I just yeah, dive into those? Or? No, 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 no. I'm the host, so I'll ask the questions. Okay. You, you right. answer them. Um, cool. Or else there would be no point me being here, um, <laughs> which would be absolute madness. But uh, yeah, um, can you elaborate on putting links and answers? Why exactly would it be penalized by Google? Yeah, so actually, I didn't say that they would be penalized by Google. I said, I, I don't. So, so the context around what, what I said was, you don't want to stuff your link, stuff your answer with links just for the sake of having them. Um, we've heard from businesses who have done this in the past. They've said that they they do this because they think it helps their search traffic and search ranking. Um, I don't know if it helps their search traffic or search ranking, but my my sense is uh, just you know as an intuitive individual user of internet products stuffing your your content on quora with links that are irrelevant to the answer itself would probably not be a great idea because i'm pretty sure the folks who are working on complex problems like search ranking and things like that at google would be able to very quickly detect that so you really want to to the extent that you do put links in your answers i think it's fine it's just as long as it's relevant to the answer itself um so one one concrete use case of that could be if you decide to repurpose a blog post that you've written on your company blog and you decide to use that to answer a question on Quora. You, you know, you might want, let's say, you know, you run a, a finance, a, you know, financial services company and you have written a blog post about how to invest in, you know, how to think about managing your portfolio as a 22 year old, right? And you've written this long blog post about that. And let's say there's a question on Quora about that. You can actually, um, quote parts of your blog post so we recommend that you block quote it or you you know you put it in quotes and you and you attribute it back to the blog post you can summarize that that blog post and say look here are the top things that you got to do if you if you decide that you want to like start investing as a 22 year old in your after your first job and if you'd like to read more about this we've written a blog post about it and and here you go right and here's a link to the blog post now that's a directly relevant link to the answer Right, and that something is something that I would I think is a great is a great way of using links and answers. Yeah, I think it makes common sense not to spam anything yeah. you know with any platform. So it makes perfect sense. Um, the next question is: Someone's asking, can you shed a little light on the Quora moderations policy? Sure. So um, yeah, so we've you know obviously so one of the key aspects of Quora as as a platform, uh, both for individuals and for businesses, is the safety. Uh, we are we pride ourselves on it being an extremely safe environment. Um, so we have a very very high bar for quality and for for safety. So things like uh, we have a policy called be nice, be respectful. So we tolerate all kinds of opinions, all kinds of of discourse. Provided it's civil, um, so you're welcome to disagree with certain points of view, uh, but you need to do it in a civil and respectful manner because without that, um, it it would be difficult for us to achieve our mission of sharing knowledge. Um, the other aspect of of um, of Quora's uh, moderation policy is quality. Uh, we pride ourselves on maintaining high quality on the platform, so we do not look kindly on sort of very poorly formatted badly written answers answers in the wrong language 
uh, answers that do not answer the question, answers stuffed with, with spam links, um, things like that. So I don't want to get into the specifics of our policy. We're very, very, those are very clearly laid out on our sort of support page. Uh, but in general, um, I think rule of thumb is the question you want to ask yourself around whether your, your question, your answer or your content on Quora uh, belongs on Quora is, are you contributing to the knowledge of the world? Uh, and are you answering the question? And is your content helpful to people who are interested in that question? And that's really the rule of thumb you want to you wanna use. Excellent. Um, so the next question is, how do Quora readers assess a writer's credibility? Is it the total content views um, being the major indicator in that regard? That's a great question. So good question to whoever to whoever asked that. Um, so we Quora uses so so the so the question is how does how do Quora readers assess a writer's credibility? And and I kind of want to take a step back and talk about credibility overall. So credibility is an extremely important signal on Quora. And we as a platform use a variety of of uh, signals that are available to us both explicitly as well as implicitly to determine how credible a specific writer is and even more on a more granular level how credible a specific piece of content from a specific writer is um one of the things that we do is we we look at signal from readers um so we obviously have uh you know explicit signals that readers can give us like upvotes um you know, to tell us that something is, is high quality, the per, who the upvote is coming from matters. So I like to use this example, you know, in terms of, you know, see the person mentioned content views. I like to use this example of, of, of uh, sort of cricket. Um, if, if somebody asked a question, uh, you know, something like, you know, what did, in, what did India do uh, differently in 1983 to win the Cricket World Cup, right? We won the, the first time we won the World Cup was in 1983. And let's say there are two answers, right? One answer is written by me and the other answer is written by Craig. Um, and Craig's answer has a hundred thousand upvotes, right? And a million views, right? So great work, Craig. Obviously you're very credible, but let's say my answer has only a thousand views, but one of the upvotes is from couple Dave who was the cricketer who was the captain of the cricket team. Now that's way more credible. That automatically puts my answer at a higher credibility than your answer, Craig, even though I have lower views. Mm -hmm. So it actually matters who is upvoting. And, you know, it's a sort of virtuous cycle, right? So I write a lot about scuba diving on Quora. When I upvote an answer on scuba diving, it's, it's evident to somebody else who's reading it that I'm also a scuba diver. It's evident to Quora as a system that Gotham's also a scuba diver, and then you know, and if he's upvoting or he's engaging with this answer uh, about scuba diving, then maybe this answer is also credible. And then think of that. You we're talking individually, but think of that at a, at a massive scale of 300 million monthly unique visitors, and suddenly you have this beautiful system that is able to determine credibility. So I don't know if I've directly answered the question, but it's it's complex, and you want to basically do things that make it obvious that that you are a credible mm -hmm. answerer. Um, Add personal experience, add use topics and use your credentials. We have a field called credentials that you can actually, you know, when you answer a question, you can set it. Um, when I answer a question about parenting, my credential says that I'm a parent. When I answer a question about Quora, my answer says that my credential says that I work at Quora. And when I answer a question about scuba diving, my credential says that I scuba dive. Right. So you want to make sure that it's relevant. Cool. And that might have answered the next question. The next question was from someone who's saying that they are already identified as a top writer under a certain topic buyer, but they also see some answers, even with limited views, that get, include, uh, that get included in Quora Digest, while others with 500 views don't make the cut. So I'm assuming that would go back then yeah. to... Something yeah, so just one one thing to keep in mind is so top writers aren't actually associated like top writers aren't tagged to topics. So I think what the individuals is trying to say is that they are a most viewed writer for a certain topic. 
Um, and what gets included in Quora Digest, it's very complex. It has to do with a number of things, including the interest and the demand of what people want to see as well. So if your answer has many views, uh, like I said, Quora is all about demand. So you want to actually maybe start answering questions that have higher demand to see if those get included in Digest. And of course, they have to meet a certain quality bar as well. Cool. Um, and also, the next question is, when you said earlier on that um, you answer, or you, you potentially were recommending that you can answer your own questions, did you mean by putting the question as anonymous and then get in and answering it yourself? No, there's no need to put it in as anonymous. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think some people feel that like asking and answering their own question is not genuine. Uh, again, kind of going back to what Quora is all about. Our mission is to share and grow the world's knowledge. If the question doesn't exist, you are benefiting the community by asking that question. So you don't need to put a question put a question in anonymously. Um, you should feel free to put a question in as yourself and answer the question as yourself. Like I said, we don't, as a platform, um, make it very obvious as to who's asked a question because questions are community property. So once you ask a question, anybody can go in and edit a question for clarif for clarity. We we have the ability to merge questions as well, so questions can get merged. Um, so it's not necessary that answering and answering a question, asking and answering a question by the same person is a bad thing at all. Cool. Um, and the next question is: You were talking about those badges earlier on, um, yeah. and someone was asking, "Can you just clarify exactly what that is?" Um, because... Yeah, so this is a beta program that we have uh, in progress. So, you know, we currently have the currently uh, until this beta program came out, we basically only had this like blue check mark, which was like the ver like a verified badge uh, um, on on Quora, uh, which we have used for businesses uh, in the past. Uh, but we realized that um, you know businesses want to be associated as businesses and and not sort of as individuals, and so we're kind of like trialing and experimenting with this program where we uh, we kind of verify businesses and 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 I allow users to identify them independently uh, and independent of, of users so that was like the little it's it's a blue briefcase icon instead of a blue check mark mm -hmm. um so yeah so we do have that it's it's a program in beta right now um the quora for business website quora.com slash business has more details on how you can request one uh, if I'm not mistaken I think it's an email request and we will kind of be we are maintaining a wait list and we will evaluate um uh, evaluate sort of those requests as they come in um in the early days we have uh, sort of the the more active businesses on quora both advertisers as well as non-advertisers that we are kind of rolling this out to uh so we wouldn't start with somebody who's like brand new uh to the platform cool no worries at all that makes sense um on what basis answers are right to, wait, wait a minute. Um, so someone's basically asking, on what basis are answers ranked in the Quora platform? Yeah. Um, sure, I can, I can, I get this question a lot. So, so Quora is, so Quora is a, is an extremely personalized platform, right? So what you see, what on Quora, you know, you as in the question asker sees on Quora, um, is different than what I see on Quora, and it's different than what Craig sees on Quora, even for us, for a given page. Right. So um, we are ranking. So our ranking systems are obviously extremely complex, uh, but generally we are optimizing for uh, providing users with knowledge and to kind of go a little bit deeper to provide knowledge that is most useful to them. So uh, we use a number of signals to rank answers on a page. Um, credibility is one of them. Uh, and there's a and like I said, credibility has a bunch of other derivative kind of factors that go into it. Um, who the person who's viewing that page is also a factor. So, uh, you know, for example, what are the best movies that were released in 2019, right? That page could have answers from somebody uh, who's writing about Tamil cinema. That page could have answers writing about somebody uh, who's writing about Hindi, Bollywood cinema. And it could be somebody who's writing about Hollywood cinema, right? And how do you decide what, and when I go to that page, Cora needs to understand 
which answer is going to be the most relevant to me so mm-hmm. it's a completely personalized experience it's really about making sure that we are providing the most useful answer to the person who's viewing it so it's not even a static ranking um yeah and yeah. um, next question is if someone intentionally gives wrong information on quora does quora block that person so we do have a moderation process so we rely on uh, so our moderation approach is kind of three pronged we use a combination of machine learning um and so that's one kind of prong of our moderation process the second process prong is a uh, community moderation so we rely on users like you to report content that they feel does not belong on quora either because it's spam or it's low quality or it's factually incorrect um or it's um violate some policy maybe it's it's be you know it's violates bnbr be nice be respectful um it's racist it it's a, a violent threat so we rely on our user so that's the second kind of bucket of moderation and the third bucket is we also do some proactive moderation ourselves which is manual so we use a combination of all of those um all of those three um if you see content that is uh, factually incorrect you can definitely report it um and the reporting process gives you the ability to um to kind of explain what is factually incorrect about it and and then our moderation team will kind of take a look at it and evaluate that and there's an appeal process as well cool no problem um as someone's asking is quora going to start its api service so we already have uh, an api for ads data so it depends on kind of what use case you're talking about uh we do have um if you're if you're running an ads business or an ads data business um or if you're a large agency or a large advertiser that wants to get ads performance data out of quora we do have an api for that um already um so we've got that i i don't know if the person was talking about content uh apis we do not support content apis at this point um i'm not aware of any plans to do that in the immediate future but we're always kind of exploring opportunities and if if it makes business sense we will do it cool um next question is can you share more details on the quora business account this particular person saying that they have their business as a topic but they haven't exactly made it a business account how would you go about doing that a uh, good question yeah so topics are independent of accounts right so a topic is is basically a way of organizing information on quora right so your your business account is not the same as a topic um there can be topics for businesses that have never used quora ever right um as well um your business account is basically is is basically like a quora account um you know in all shapes and forms it you know the business account uh, feature has a few additional bells and whistles you know things like allowing multiple people to to manage it um you know things like instead of kind of where the individual because for individuals we say you know works works at or lives in we kind of change some of those credentials to be more business friendly um for now and and um and we're kind of evolving that so topics are independent than business accounts topics are also community property on quora so you can go in as a business and actually edit a topic page to make sure it's accurate make sure the your logo is correct um and you can do things like that and as a business you can mention on your profile that one of the topics that you know a lot about is the topic that kind of relates to your business so for example if you're a florist um let's say it's you know craig's floral shop right for example sorry craig um <laughs> you know the craig's floral shop can claim on its quora profile that it knows a little bit about flowers a little bit about uh running small businesses and it could claim that it knows about Craig's Florist's shop which is could be a topic on Cora as well good answer um next one is this person's been searching quite a lot about Cora spaces and how to scale it but haven't been able to find much content around it can you share any details on that yeah sure i can um so Cora spaces you're right that is it is not much content about Cora spaces on Cora because it's a it's it's a reasonably new feature uh we are actually approaching the one year anniversary of our beta launch for spaces very soon i remember we launched quora spaces on diwali day of last year so just about a year in 
Um, and the, the product has been evolving a lot. Today, we don't even allow all users to create spaces. So the ability to create a space is by invitation. Uh, and we are rapidly increasing the number of people that are allowed to create spaces. If you do have a space that you'd like to create, we do have a form that you can fill out. Uh, or you can just reach out to me and mention that you are on the webinar. Um, and maybe, you know, we, based on your kind of what you're looking to do with it, I can kind of give you access. Um, so I guess, like, how do you scale a Quora space? It's a very open-ended question. Uh, it really depends on what your space is about. Um, we do a lot of stuff internally to help you get, act, you know, get your space discovered. But your space needs to kind of get off the ground first, organically on its own before I can kind of give you more specific advice on how to scale it because it's a very open-ended product. You could use it to as a broadcast mechanism. You could use it as a community building mechanism, um, and so on. So I'm sorry I couldn't be more specific, but it really depends on on your use case. Cool. Um, now, I've got a question here, and I'm not sure if you want to answer it because you've already said that you don't want to talk too much about it. But someone's asking um, what objectives are available on Quora advertising platform and how do they perform, in your opinion? Is that something you'd rather talk about at the conference? or? Yeah, so so yeah, I can very quickly. So we we support a bunch of different like ad options. Um, I'm, I'm not very familiar with the exact details of kind of you know, I don't want to get into the exact details. Our Quora for Business webpage, quora.com slash business, has a lot of detail. But we support all the way from broad sort of, uh, so we have all kinds of targeting options. And in terms of objectives, um, you know, you can actually create custom objectives as well because, you know, you can set up our pixel and define your marketing objective and optimize to that objective um, as well. Um, so, yeah, so all the way from, you know, CPM kind of like broad, you know, top of the funnel objectives down to kind of, I want to optimize for this event in my product um, and optimize for, for that specific objective. You can do it kind of all the way. It's a full stack platform. Um, and yeah, they're a great answer. And, and for anyone who's looking to, uh, you know, they were asking your opinion on how they perform. I've tried um, Quora ads and what I have to say is I got a hell of a lot of good quality relevant traffic and clicks um, for a very, very, very reasonable price. So in my opinion, they do work very, very well. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm independent. Um, so the next question um, is, so while sharing blog links uh, to a relevant question, if, this uh, if, if someone was to add some content from their own blog, in the call to action, share the link. Would that be a case of plagiarism? So I think they're referring to our policy on plagiarism. No, it would not. As long as you attribute the, the content that you've quoted um, back to the original source of that content on the internet, which is your blog post, it's fine. Um, and why questions? So why are the question stats not shown in the search results as a user? I can see that effort needs to be put in to improve the user journey. And at the moment, uh, the user needs to go to the question to check the stats. So thanks for the feedback. Yes, you're right. We, I think we always need to do a lot to improve the, the user experience. And that's something that we, we always work on. Uh, you actually can get a sense of demand uh, in search results. Um, you can see the number of followers for a question in search results. Um, and I think there are some filtering tools as well. So you might be able to filter um for um you know for views and stuff i think but if not yes you're right you have to go to the question page if you want to know the exact number of views for each question because that's also moving changes every day cool and i'm going to ask another two questions and then we're out of time um how can a brand recover if its profile is banned oh good question um it really depends on what the ban is for um i would suggest uh reach out to me and we can see what we can we can do about it if it was like an egregious case of like just like continuous spam on the platform it, i don't think that's something we'd take very kind look at look at very kindly uh but happy to kind of have a conversation and and uh you know uh see if we can resolve that for you um, and the final one and i'm sure loads of people want to know this because they're always obsessed but 
Um, someone's asking, how do I get the blue tick verified badge? I know you were talking about that earlier, but this person yeah, so, is asking. So the blue tick for individuals is based on, uh, is based, we have a very high standard for that. It's it's basically, you know, based on kind of whether you could be mistaken for a fake account um, on, on Quora. So we use that for sort of um, very notable high profile individuals who, uh, have a high risk of being impersonated um, mm -hmm. on on the platform. We do have a process for this. Um, you can look it up on. I think there's a Quora answer about this, written by Quora, or it's in our help uh, on our support site. Um, there's a form you could fill up if you think that your profile uh, or deserves a, a, a blue check mark. For example, if you're representing a celebrity or or a government official, and we'd be happy to kind of um, engage with you on that. Cool. Um, so that is us sadly out of time for today. We get quite a lot of questions in there. So hopefully people seen a lot of value in that. Um, if anyone's watching this and they want to get in touch with Gotham, um, the slides will be available under this webinar um, after the webinar and you'll be able to go to the last slide and you'll be able to um, get his Twitter, email and everything else if you want to get in touch to talk about whatever um, you guys want to talk about. But um, if you want to see more from Gautam, he will be speaking in India on the 5th of December alongside uh, myself and a whole bunch of other people. So make sure that you try and get along. There's still tickets available and uh, you will be able to see a link in the YouTube chat there um, to the conference at some point as well. But thanks again, Gautam, for spending Thank you. time um, sharing all those insights. And I will see you in India on the 5th yep, of December. Have a good trip. Cheers. And thanks, guys, for attending today. Bye. Cheers.